uh, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 31, uh, the Lord Jesus speaking the Sermon on the Mount. It has been said, anyone who divorces his wife must give her a certificate of divorce. But I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality, makes her the victim of adultery. And anyone who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you've heard that it was said to the people long ago, do not break your oath, but fulfill to the Lord the oaths you have made. But I tell you, do not swear an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is God's throne, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make even one hair white or black. All you need to say is simply, Yes or no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. How do you feel uh, when people lie to you, uh, when people break their promises? Uh, I remember one school assembly at Priory, I was asking the children to tell me uh, about some of the hard things that happen in life. Uh, one little boy, I'm guessing he was aged five or six. When your dad says he's going to take you out and doesn't turn up. And that response still gives me a lump in my throat. In our relationships with each other, those two things that always catch us out, that we rarely see coming, that cut us to the core, when people lie to us, when people don't keep their promise to us. Uh, the Sermon on the Mount, sometimes called the Manifesto of the Kingdom of God, at a general election each party produces a manifesto. If we are in power, this is what the kingdom is going to look like. Jesus here saying, if you make me your king, this is what the kingdom is going to look like. This is what you are signing up to. Uh, and we've already seen in the Sermon on the Mount, uh, his kingdom is more wonderful than we think possible. Uh, you've heard that it was said, you shall not murder, but I tell you that everyone who is angry with his brother. What would the world be like if no one ever lost it? Uh, what would your world would uh, be like if you never lost it? Uh, if you never descended into seething and bitterness and bad behaviour? That would be transformative, wouldn't it? Uh, you've heard that it was said, you, no, you shall not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent, what would the world be like if you didn't have to worry about the safety of your daughter? About someone making overtures to your husband? Uh, and this week, divorce. Uh, such a painful subject for so many of us. Uh, I know how many of you have been devastated by the divorce of your parents or your children or your closest friends or have been devastated by your own divorce. Uh, most weddings I take, uh, I say something like the two of you are doing something utterly extraordinary this afternoon. Because you are giving each other the priceless gift of security. Uh, you're saying to each other, I will love you no matter what. For better, for worse. In sickness and in health. Uh, even when I spot someone else I prefer. Uh, even when it's so tough and there seems no chemistry anymore and you don't want to make love to me. Uh, even when sickness comes, even when mental illness comes, even when your habits irritate me, even when I realise that you're not the person I thought you were, I never, ever, 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 ever 
going to leave you. I want you to be utterly secure in that fact. Those are the essence of the wedding vows and I am truly awed every time a couple promise them. Uh, but as some of you tragically know, sometimes we make those promises and the other person walks away. Uh, they do something so, so serious that it smashes everything to pieces. Uh, they sleep with someone else. They are ongoingly violent. They simply desert you. Uh, some of you have been through that and I am so sorry. What, is, what exactly is Jesus saying in these verses? Well, he's saying marriage is lifelong. And yes, in certain situations, the other person does desecrate the marriage, say by adultery. But what you guys are doing is simply breaking your vows when it doesn't suit you anymore. Yes, you can justify it. You can always justify it. But the bottom line is you're breaking your word in the most serious way. Uh, and so in reality, you are not actually divorced in God's sight, despite the bit of paper. Uh, and when your wife remarries uh, in a Palestinian subsistence culture where a wife without a husband has nothing, she has virtually no choice but to remarry, you're turning her into an adulteress, says Jesus. Except in the most extreme circumstances, you must keep your promise, says Jesus. Now, much more could be said about this, and I do know how hard, how painful this is. Uh, and if you need to talk this through without shame, without embarrassment, uh, please do come and see me. Uh, more often than you might think, people do come to talk with me about their present struggles and their past failures. Uh, Jesus goes on to talk about other promises we make. Uh, we haven't got time to unpack the detail of his words here, but his message is so simple, so what you would expect, so how you would have others treat you. Uh, verse 37, essentially Jesus is saying, let your yes be yes let what you say simply be yes or no be people of your word be people who are known as promise keepers not promise breakers be people who are known for honesty not exaggeration or half truths now, just because you didn't make a promise under oath, just because you didn't put it in writing, just because you had your fingers crossed behind your back when you said it, whether it's something major or something trivial, if you said, if you agreed, if you arranged to, you must keep your word. Now, yet again, at this point in the Sermon on the Mount, most of us will need to acknowledge two basic truths. Firstly, that what Jesus says is right. This is how we were designed to live. This is how he lived. Jesus is the ultimate promise keeper. But secondly, I am not the promise keeper I would like to be. A marriage, as I prepare people for marriage, I always, always say, Marriage is going to be much tougher than you anticipate it will be. Many of us are so difficult to live with. Now, I am still married to Sarah only because of her forbearance and forgiveness. And keeping the other promises in life. My life is littered to my shame with broken promises. Uh, yes, I'll give you a call. Yes, I'll pray for you. Yes, I'll be coming to that event. Yes, I'll do that. What Jesus teaches about promise keeping is so right, but I am not the promise keeper I want to be. And that is why I need the gospel of Jesus. Uh, I read these verses and I'm so tempted to say, so I guess the answer is just try harder. Now, I mean this absolutely seriously. The day you hear just try harder from my lips is the day you need to say to me, Sean, it's time for you to step down from church leadership. Because just try harder is not the gospel. Just try harder. They are 
crushing words. For I know that even if I try harder, even if I try my hardest, I will still fail. So here are three completely different words. We need Jesus because Jesus forgives my past. He forgives the mess I have made, the hurt I have caused. And Jesus transforms my present. He gives me his Holy Spirit to change me from the inside, to turn me supernaturally into a promise keeper, to make me as faithful as him. And he also transforms my present by healing me of the hurt that has been caused by others, which for some of you is significant. Past, present and future, Jesus guarantees my future. One day there will be a new creation where there is no one but promise keepers and you will be there. You need Jesus, I need Jesus, we need Jesus. And he promises to be the king of those who turn to him in repentance and faith. And he promises to turn us into promise keepers.